Hi, my YouTube friends. Thanks for coming to the Handyman Zone. Today's video, really quick, basic circular saw. And as you all know, I'm a legacy YouTube partner. So I want to thank you from that point of view for stopping in. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of your interaction over there, as far as YouTube concerned, helps me out. So if I helped you out with this video in any way, Use the comment box, that's what it's there for. Rate the video and subscribe to my channel as long as you're here. Because you all know, I'm the handyman with the personality. I'm the one who shows you all the real stuff that happens when you're doing things around your house. Don't edit any of the crap out. i show you how to get around pro One of the first things I'd like to touch upon, and this will be our, our example saw today. It's a well-used, years and years old, probably about Ooh, if I think about it, maybe 15 year old, uh, 18 volt <laughs> portable. Oh, from a legacy YouTube partner on the handyman zone. But there's one tip I'm sticking in this video that's going to make the whole thing worth it. So check it out. And when you get that tip, you're going to know. And it's going to change your whole outlook on making cuts with a circular saw blade. So don't forget to sub while you're here. It's the... Uh, the relation of the blade to the shoe. This is the shoe, this big plate here, and this is the blade, this red thing here. It's adjustable, adjustable as far as uh, with this angle here. You see that? Like you could make up to 45 degree angle cuts and it's adjustable. And the lock screw is on this particular blade's in the front here. Other ones may have it on the back. What you want to do, especially if you haven't used the saw in a while, or if it's a new saw, or it's been dropped or something like that, you want to check that the blade is actually at a 90 degree angle, and we're going to use a carpenter saw for that. We're going to rest it on the shoe and bring it up against the blade. While we're doing that, we're holding back this, the guard, and uh, you see that space there? That shows us that this is out of alignment. So, of course, we're going to move it into alignment. So you can see against the contrast of my shirt now we're much better relationship of a 90 degree angle in the saw to the shoe as there is no space here so that's going to get you a nice straight cut as far as that angle is concerned then we're going to tighten up the adjustment for that the next thing we're going to touch upon is the is the depth of the cut again i'm pulling back the the shoe and the, it's, I'm pulling back the blade guard, and the shoe is also adjustable as to the depth of cut. This is important because you want to adjust this. So here's a piece of scrap wood, and let's say we were cutting the scrap wood. We would want at least half of these indentations here. We would want at least half of that sticking past the bottom of the cut. And the reason of that is is it helps clear the sawdust while the blade's working which gives you a sharper cut and it also helps the saw work easier okay so you see that it's right at the widest part of the blade I got about half sticking up if if I was cutting this wood that is what I'd want it's also safer because less of the sharp blade is sticking below the material you're cutting and most of the time when people cut their fingers off with circular saws it's because they're holding the workpiece and they'll actually slice through their own fingers oh so the less you have sticking out the less chance of getting a really deep cut where your fingers would actually be falling on the floor and believe me it happens a lot especially like on Saturdays and Sundays the emergency room is always gonna have like a circular saw injury at a busy hospital <laughs> because these weekend warriors get out there and start like holding work and trying to cut it and stuff always like clamp your work to a table 
and make the cut and always be aware of where your free hand is. Circular saws. And, and the injuries from this, it's always like fingers off. You know, I've talked to you before about like, how falling off a ladder gets you like compound fractures. You know, where the bone pokes through the skin and then you get infections and everything gets really complicated. Or you get a broken uh, spine and you got to live the rest of your life as a paraplegic, you know, which you, you're better off dead sometimes, you know, from like the neck down or something I'm talking about. Um, so circular sore injuries is always like fingers falling on the floor, you know. <laughs> so be careful with that. Now we're going uh, to touch upon blade sharpness and basically... If you hit any nails or screws, you're going to just wipe out your blade. You kind of want, the, when you're checking for sharpness, it, you kind of want your skin to kind of stick. A you want a sticky blade. I call it sticky blade. If you can do this and it doesn't stick, your finger just slides off, you probably need a new blade or get your what blade sharp. What I've done sharpened. here is I've taken a straight edge, which could be any piece of metal or a nice straight piece of furring strip or something like that. And what I've done is I've measured the distance from the edge of the shoe to the blade. And this particular saw is four inches from the blade to the edge of the shoe. I've measured back on both ends from the, my desired cut, I've measured back four inches on both ends put a little pencil mark. Then I took this straight edge and I clamped it with a couple of C-clamps at the four inch marks on both ends so I have a nice straight cut. Now I'll simply take the circular saw, putting the edge of the shoe against my guide, I'll be able to just cut using the straight edge as a guide and I won't even have to look at the work and I'll get a nice straight cut. In the table, over there and I have a, a work stand here so where the cut is is right here you can see I'm not gonna hit anything I'm not gonna hit my work stand and kill my blade and I'm not gonna hit the table and cut into the table I'm gonna make a nice straight cut straight across let's do our depth of cut adjustment and I pull the guard back put the saw there I want half of those teeth sticking out and I'm just going to use this as the guide. Now it's a big piece and I can't reach all the way across. So at this point I come in a comfortable and safe position over here. I'm going to hold the work and being really conscious of where my free hand is in relation to the saw blade. Pull the saw back a little bit to start the blade again. And finish our cut. As soon as you pick up the saw, your guard's going to come back over the blade. So you can put it on your work. You're not going to dull your blade. You're not going to dull your blade. You're not going to ruin your work. Because this the here guard is a plug-in, more powerful circular saw, but the same basic thing. You got your blade guard that comes back as you make your cuts. You got your uh, shoe which is adjustable both in the angle and the depth of cut. On this one, one note I would like to show you is I actually cut the, by accident, I cut the cord. This is really supposed to be like a seven or eight foot cord. I cut it, but I spliced in a uh, replacement end, thereby saving this uh, circular saw Okay, the carpenter square, and you check the 90 degree angle on the blade. This one's really nice. Oh my God. Okay, the depth of cut on this one. The other one had a screw. This one actually has a lever that you pull up, and then you get your, your, your depth of cut, and you lock it back down again. This is very powerful. It makes a lot of noise, and uh, it's very torquey. So when you turn it on, it actually like torques in your hand. Really, I'm telling you guys, Circular saws, I want you all to be really careful and pay really close attention where that free hand is. Because you know where your other hand is, it's holding the... Okay, a nice idea is to actually use the handle on the blade. A lot of times, 
you really got to, you know, haul that free piece of work, especially on a big piece of sheet material. Really careful where those fingers are because they're hidden underneath the way and you don't want to slice them because they'll be dropping on the floor. This cut is going to be like a six foot cut and I'm using a pencil mark. I'm not using a guide, all right? So I've marked it. I used a square. It made a nice mark the whole way. I got the piece supported on that work stand over there and the table over here, but where my cut is, you can see the, if the blade's not going to hit anything, is keep our eye on the blade and the pencil mark, and we're just going to follow that straight down, okay? Circular saw blades, it's because of the width of the blade, they kind of want to make a straight cut. It's a quick circular saw video, but there's one tip I'm sticking in here that's going to make watching this whole four or five minute video totally worth it. So check it out. Oh All right, God. Handyman Zone fans, here's the tip that's going to make the whole video worth it. You ready? Okay, girls, how do you like that camera angle? All right, so all right, here's the tip that's going to make it all worth it. Let's say we got to cut this piece at 28, 28 inches. All right, so we measure, we put the mark. We take the carpenter's square, and we bring the mark to the edge. Still using the carpenter's square, I'm going to move it back, back enough to make up with the blade. Got it? And then... Using the carpenter square for the shoe of the of the circular saw. That's the tip. Oh my god! That's the tip that makes watching the whole video worth it.